you good people. This is just a quick update. This is day one of the framing. In case y'all didn't know it, we're in a lumber shortage. You believe that? Yeah, everybody's sick, drawing checks, sitting at the house. So we don't have lumber. They're supposed to make another drop tomorrow for the rest of my lumber package. But until then, Daddy is laying out his plumbing. I'm gonna I'm doing my markings as we speak. And then I'll stretch strings and then we'll start putting our pipe down. Hey, well we're back. I got my sombrero on. My Mexicano hat. And it's hot. This thing right here gives us some good shade down here in Texas. I'm going to show you my layout of my walls. Okay, here we go. So these are my 6x6 beams. You see that right there? That's called a uh-oh. I had to scoop my little bath wall over. But anyhow, this hot pink string makes good temporary walls to show us where our plumbing's going to go. This wall doesn't have any plumbing on it. This one does. It's 5 foot 8 in between these two uh, walls. My tub will go right here where I'm standing. And for you good people, what you do is you measure from the outside three and a half inches in and then you'll get you a mark like this and then you'll take from here and you'll measure 15 inches in or 16 depending on how wide your tub is. We're probably going to put 30 inch tubs, so we'll go 15 inches to the center, and that's where we'll start with our pipe, our drain pipe, our P trap. Anyhow, you run on down here to where these pipes are leaning, and that's going to be our bathroom, I mean, our kitchen sink right here. That's where we'll start the sink, and then over here. Where that rebar sticking up, that will be our washer, clothes washer. So let me get up here on this beam, and this fat boy walks this beam. Of course, it is six inches wide, but it takes that when you weigh 400 pounds like me. Anyhow, this right here is our master bath wall, and this is the plumbing that will go on here. And our drain will be in the center of the two bathrooms. That's what I'm shooting for. So when we get our pipe glued together, I will give you another gander at it. We'll be back in a minute. All right, y'all, this is the next day. I ran out of sunlight yesterday, so I had to quit. But I was able to get my walls marked, and um, I glued a little pipe together. Uh, the good Lord blessed me. I found a mistake. Last night, I marked on my plans that my bed bathroom was supposed to have been six foot eight. It's really five foot eight. And when I was laying my plates out, I kept losing a foot and I couldn't figure out where in the world I lost it. And then I seen on my plan that it was mismarked. Anyways, that's a blessing. If I wouldn't have done that, one of my bedrooms was going to wind up a foot smaller. So, well, we're gluing pipe this morning and I'll show you what I'm doing and how I do it, uh, it's coming along pretty good. I hope to get it finished today. My lumber is supposed to be delivered today to finish the framing. Um, and my framers, I got to call them back because they run out of material yesterday. So, here we go. Okay, y'all. When I do my, uh, when I'm, I thought that was my lumber. I don't know if y'all could hear that air brake. And I don't know if y'all can hear that calf neither, but I got one back there worrying me. Uh, so when I'm gluing pipe, I use a lot of primer, especially on this pipe here, because it's something that I've had saving money. You know, these joints are about $20 a piece, a dollar a foot. 20 foot long, you can't do the math. Another thing I'd like to talk about is this right here is a sweeping T. I only use inch and a half, two inch, and four inch. I use four inch from my main line. 
It might cost a little extra, but you know, I don't want to unstop the pipe. So, I use sweeping tees, not sharp tees, not sharp 90s, but let the let it flow as it goes down that L, that slope right there. And another thing, when you're putting, when you're roughing your pipe in, you just break a bubble on your level. I use a four foot level. Sometimes I use a six foot, but it's generally it's too long if you have a lot of fittings you're trying to put together. Uh, but anyhow, you break a bubble, and it generally works out to be an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch fall. When you begin to glue it, uh, make sure that I like to make my primer dry. Uh, when it gets a nice dull look, it's, it's good enough. Give your glue a little shake, stir it up. Here in just a second, when I get this done, I'll give you a peek at what I've been doing. I love doing this. I love doing plumbing and electrical. Plumbing is like playing with Legos for grown men. One thing I wanted to say while I was doing this is, you know, when kids are growing up, parents stress that they do their best, right? They say, you know, you're not going to get good grades unless you try. And when it comes to sports, especially football and baseball, I mean, people are just ate up with it. They get on to their kids, you're not trying hard enough. But you know, how many people will apply that same mentality to doing something for themselves, such as this? Do you know how much money I'm saving doing this by myself? Now granted, I ain't gonna lie to you. It's hard work. And, uh, well, I mean, you're gonna make mistakes, trial and error. But you know, we can always fix something when it breaks or when it's off, right? And it builds patience and character. And uh, you see this level, it's a one foot level. I'm uh, just breaking the bubble on it. But I just wanna share that with you. I'm teaching my kids to, to work. I mean, you hear people saying that, well, girls are just as good as boys. Why, sure they are. I mean, if a girl can work like a man, then they need man's money, right? Uh, but my kids are just as capable of doing this right here as, as anybody. And I tell you a secret. There's coming a time when all this cheap labor won't be here no more. And all these people going to college to be computers and, you know, paper pushers of some kind, they're going to be a dime a dozen. And the blue collar man is going to be back in, in style. Everybody's going to be wanting to send their kids to a trade school to learn something to do with their hands because everybody else has swamped the market with these cushy jobs. I'm not getting on y'all. If that's what y'all do for a living, I'm not picking. I'm just saying that you kids need to think of something to do other than just sitting on your behind. Too many people play them video games and surf the internet and go to the gym because they don't go outside and cut their own grass or do their own plumbing. So let me show you where we're at. So this is what I got completed. This right here is going to be a 90 and then we're going to catch the toilet from the master and it's going to go out right here. Thank the good Lord for that hoe. I didn't really have to do any digging and dug most of it with that. That furthest 90, um, well the middle 90 is going to turn, it's going to catch the lavatory and it will catch the kitchen sink and the um, uh, washing machine. I'm using all two inch pipe right there. The sinks will be an inch and a half and then that uh, Y right there with the closest to us will catch the bathtub. So there you have it. I'll be back in just a minute when I get some more done. Well, this right here is the end of the day. I didn't work a full day. I 
got sidetracked a few times, but my family's home and it's hot. I'm ready to go in. So here we go. This is it right here. Um, I got to put the riser for the uh, little girl's lavatory. I got to put an extension on the toilet right there where it'll come above the floor joist. And I got to finish this bathtub run right here. I'm going to do it all in the morning when it's cool. Uh, there's some holidays underneath this pipe, as you can see. But that's where you gather up dirt and see those concrete blocks and some treated wood. And you put it all underneath there to give it some support. And when we put a floor joist in, we can uh, brace it off with some wood here and there, like this pipe here will be connected to a floor joist with some plumber's tape and it'll be rigid, stiff, won't bend. I'll show you the master bath right fast. It's pretty, ain't it? For someone that didn't go to college, I'd say that's pretty all right. My dad taught me how to do plumbing. He said, son, it's just like things in business. Poop runs downhill. Just don't let your poop outrun your water or your water outrun your poop, one or the other. Anyways, here you go. This first vent is the bath, master bath sink, and then you have the toilet. And this line runs along here, and it'll catch the, uh, the uh, tub. So, there you go. Not bad for a day's work. And just think of all the money we saved, right? That's a little DIY. Well, y'all be sure and thank the good Lord for your blessings. But they ain't hard to spot. You just got to open your eyes and you can see them. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Well, y'all, I just didn't think it would, would be, wouldn't be fitting if I didn't show you what I was talking about, about securing the pipe. So that right there is a wood brace I've put in between two joints, or joists, and that's a plumber's tape that's securing it to the, to the board. See, I've done that on all of these and here in just a minute I'm going to finish the vents over there for the laboratory and the bathtub and uh, of course when the floor joist comes across they're going to go the same direction when they are the same over there then we will secure those pipes just like we did this and then once the floor's down I'll get my big butt on the ground and get up underneath there and secure it in more places but that's where we're at so, hope you'll have a good day.